All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the third episode of Full Draw, the series presented by Onyx Hunt. In this episode, we've got a coos deer hunt, adoration from the dialed in hunter, and peanut butter bowl by the Golden Rosie. Um, we've got a bunch of giveaways that we're doing on this episode. If you're excited for it and ready for some bow, hint, bow hunting, let's hear some cheering. <laughs> Crispy Boots has provided two pairs of boots for the giveaway and they're gonna throw in a pair of socks as well. Good luck. All right, we've added two mobile hunting kits from Trophy Line. It's a new Venatic saddle, a platform, and climbing sticks. All right, we're gonna add five half dozen arrows from Victory Archery.
Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jack Lander, and I'm sure a lot of you have wondered what a Ruzi is. And it's actually short for Roosevelt. So yeah, I started Golden Rosie Outdoors a few years ago. Um, I was just really inspired by what people were doing with film and making really cool cinematic films that really told a, a cool story. And this year, I was fortunate enough to capture some really cool footage and put together a film for the film for the film tour. Um, so yeah, I can't thank Jade and everybody at Full Draw enough for selecting the film, and I really hope that you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. I uh, just had my first creamy peanut butter poop, which is fantastic. Cause the last few days it's been like, uh, it's been a, would it be a thinner viscosity than water. Basically what Mike's putting on a sandwich is how I did this morning. So I'm feeling a little bit better, but while I was relieving myself, a bull bugled down on the bottom, um, opposite side of the canyon, but in the same hole, we blew that bull out on yesterday. So we're gonna drive around and come up from the bottom, see if we can get our wind right. Um, yeah, so me and Mike are gonna eat some brekkie real quick. We're gonna get changed. See if we can go find a bull. almost straight across on another bench and he could be working away. His bugle was getting faint. Um, so we're gonna drop down. There he goes again, he's in the same spot. Anyways, we found him. We're gonna get over there and see what happens when we get on his side. Good stuff. This is the seventh time that we have sat down and given up. And our... He's coming. He's coming our He's way. Right there. All right. Hey, our wind's blowing this way. So we gotta move. Do you see him? Stop, stop, stop. Freeze. 
Frank, you had him at 22 yards. Okay. Hey, you did fine. You so, didn't feel comfortable to shoot. So I'm sorry if I screwed that up for you and told him to kill it, but... I was comfortable, but should I have let it go? Absolutely. Okay. You should have shot. That's just a mistake. That's, that's okay. We'll get you on more elk. Dude, I'm some peanut butter, man. I can't wait. Are you kidding me? That was great. Okay, let's go track right, well, him. Yeah, let's start blood tracking. Luke. Pick him up. Good shot, Sean. Oh my gosh. So it did fall out. Got cool. good penetration. Yeah. Thank you guys. Let's Thanks for hanging out and let me hang out. Pretty neat. Pretty neat. Be really gentle with your knife and just kind of let it glide over everything. Sportsman's discount, man. 10. I'm a professional hunter. You know when like geese fly and they're like in a triangle and you know how sometimes like one of them is like a lot longer than the other? Do you know why that is? No. It's because there's more birds in that one. <laughs> That's solid. <laughs> I'm glad you're sweating too, Mike. Are we at the bottom? Yeah, we're at the bottom. Now we gotta go up a little bit back to the other side. Ten minute break. No, we're, we're here. I stopped walking my way then, let's go. Mm -hmm. Here. 
many of us use archery as a way to unwind. It's a time of meditation. It's an opportunity to clear our mind from everything that surrounds us. A time we can work to accomplish our goals and to breathe fresh air. As we practice shot after shot, we recall memories from the past and dream about things to come this fall. A shooter is only as good as his arrow. The details make all the difference. The difference between filling a tag and making joyful memories that will soon be forgotten, or coming home empty-handed and heartbroken. Here at Black Ovis, we care as much about your arrow performance as you do. With our custom Arrow ID Builder, you can get exactly what you want when you want. The days of waiting hours in a bow shop are over. With all the top brands to choose from, paired with our easy to use custom Arrow ID Builder, your options are endless. Your arrows will be shipped right to your door, handmade, quality built, and ready to shoot. Hey, what's up guys? My name is Josh Kirshner. I run Dialed In Hunter. I'm super excited to have a film in the Full Draw Film Tour this year. I went to my first Full Draw Film Tour seven years ago and ever since then I always thought it'd be super rad to have my own film in the tour. So very honored to be standing here. Uh, this is a backcountry coos deer hunt that took place in my home state of Arizona last January. I backpack in with a couple good buddies and my brother and we just experience all the highs and lows that come with bow hunting. Um, spot and stock hunting coos deer is incredibly difficult. These deer are super jumpy. The ground that they're standing on is very loud and it's just the ultimate challenge trying to close the distance with a bow. It's something that I am incredibly passionate about and I'm really excited to share that with you. This is called Adoration. I hope you like it. We just found that buck again. He's bedded down. I see the blood on him. His head is kind of going like this. We're just going to leave him be and hopefully we can go get him tomorrow. Oh my god, dude. What a... January is without a doubt one of my favorite months in my home state of Arizona. The combination of good friends, living in the dirt, and opportunity to hunt rutting coos bucks with our bows is one that never runs stale. Each year a group of friends and I load up our backpacks and call the hills that the gray ghost haunts our home for a minute. We live among them all the while trying to sneak into bow range with hopes of bringing home just a fraction of the coos country we hold so dear. So far, it, uh, 
So far that looks like does over there. Do you, do you see, where, where are you looking? I'm just looking straight across um, where the space kind of just goes out okay. into the creek bottom here. Okay, there's another group of deer. So if you go on that longer face mm -hmm. and you go up over the, that hump mm -hmm. right there, and then down, it flattens out. Right over in there, there's another group of deer right there on the top. Yeah, so far it looks like it looks like they're all does so far. We got two bucks spotted so far. Two small guys are sparring over here. There's like I don't know how many. I say I've already lost count of how many does we've seen. That first evening, we lost count of how many deer we saw. Among all of those deer. There was one buck that made all of our jaws drop, though. His body dwarfed every other deer in the area. His antlers were thick and dark. He was in a good spot for a stalk right from the get-go, so I made a run at him. Just like coos deer do, though, he evaporated into thin air, and I was left walking back to camp with a full quiver of arrows. Man, I think that... Uh... I think that buck saw us, he either saw us or he just chased us away, you know, which is, that's how the rut is, that's how hunting during the rut is, you kind of go all over the place, um, but it was worth a try, he wasn't that far away, first evening we've been glassing like 15 minutes, we got packed in earlier this morning, or, and um, got everything set up and sat down and started seeing deer right away, so We've got some days out here, so it should be fun. That's definitely not the last stock that we go on. Be a fun week. <laughs> I'm so pumped for this new long spoon, dude. Oh, the longs, once you go long spoon, you never go back. Yeah. Funny story. Heather actually bought this for me the last time we came for this backpack hunt. Oh, you were telling me you forgot it. You misplaced it. Yes. And all I had was that little bitty stubby one. Just, just, and dude, just, the cheesy knuckle one. Yep. Just digging in. Yeah, it's hard. Cheesy knuckles. Cheesy knuckles. Cheesy knuckles. Serious problem. Gabe went after this uh, spike buck not too long ago. I just found a pretty nice buck. He looks like a three by four, so I'm kind of trying to keep eyes on him. He's by himself. I think he's kind of searching for does right now based on how he's moving. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm just gonna see what he does and if he holds up somewhere, make a run at him, or if he starts rutting does, probably gonna get over there. Spot and stalking rutting coos deer with a bow is all about calculated aggression in my opinion. The deer are being aggressive, so you be aggressive. And the more at bats you get, the sharper you get. I did go after that 3x4 buck that morning. In the end, I got picked off by a few unseen does. Part of me was glad though. That buck from the first day just kept lurking in the back of my mind. With any luck, I'd get another run at him. On our third evening, as if he wanted us to see him, the buck that consumed my thoughts stood out on a distant ridge as the sun said its goodbyes. The next morning couldn't come soon enough. Relocating bucks during the rut can prove difficult sometimes as deer movement is random. For whatever reason though, this buck stayed put. It put a smile on my face that morning when we found him hanging with a doe not far from where he originally was. I was elated to get another opportunity at him. I'd just have to hope the urges of the rut wouldn't send him out of our view. Good luck, man. You got it.
relocated the bigger buck from last night and uh, got him in this little cut so I made the loop around and Eric guided me in with, with uh, hand signals and uh, I started I could not see where this buck was so I started throwing rocks to see if he would like stand up or something and I threw a rock and then I see beneath me I see his antlers go like that and he was right beneath me I had this buck at 15 yards for two hours I stood above him eventually he gets up he starts working working to my right so I kind of go around I have a tree right here so I kind of go around and try to head him off but what he actually did was he went like this went this way so I came back around he walks up on the hill and I have him at 70 yards broadside pull back then he turns directly away from me so I let down he turns again quartering away pull back stop him let the arrow go I heard the arrow hit him and I saw him for all of about two seconds before he went around a hill Eric saw him uh, boogieing down into the bottom of a, of a draw uh, and he said he wasn't looking that good so um, like he was struggling a little bit so fingers crossed <laughs> Um, he's a really nice buck. I hope that he's just laying down there dead. We're gonna give him plenty of time It's been uh, just over an hour so far uh, So we're gonna sit here hang out have some snacks and uh, Then go see if we can find my arrow and stuff see if we can find some signs, so I Hate this part of hunting <laughs> So yeah, we're just, we're just um, Trying to trying to keep positive thoughts going All right, just found my arrow sticking in the ground. Um, I'm gonna hit him a little bit back, so we're gonna we're gonna go down the trail to see what kind of blood we find, and just take it from there. My heart sank a little bit when we found my arrow. Instead of that bright red blood you hoped to see, it was green—a classic sign of a gut shot. Just as we rounded that hill, I spotted the buck bedded beneath a tree but had no shot at him. The buck eventually got up and slowly walked away. I tried to push down on him, but the vegetation wouldn't allow for another shot. We decided to back out, let him be, and come back over to this area in the morning. Until then, we'd hope that maybe, just maybe, we'd pick him up in the glass from afar. We just found that buck again. He's bedded down. I see the blood on him. His head is kind of going like this. We're just going to leave him be and hopefully we can go get him tomorrow. Oh my god, dude. What a... Yeah, we watched him for about probably 30 minutes, I'd say, until dark. We watched him until we couldn't see anymore. And he just kept... He would get up, walk like seven yards, and then bed down again. Um, and by walk, I mean, there's a few times he almost, we thought he was gonna fall over. He looks like he's having a real hard time. He's panting a lot, his mouth's open. So, fingers crossed. We're gonna set up and glass that hill again, see if we can see him, if we don't. We're just going to make our way over there and start going to each one of his beds um, and checking under all the trees over there. The good thing is there's not a ton of <clears throat> there's not a ton of trees, so it should make like finding where he, you know, may have wanted to bed down fairly fairly easy uh, as long as he stayed on that hill. So got a long night ahead of us, especially me. I'm either going to sleep really well or I'm going to sleep like crap tonight. <laughs> Let's go to our glassing spot. We're going to sit here, glass the whole hillside that we saw that buck on last night. We watched him till dark. We're going to stay up top. 
glass that hillside first for a bit, see if we can pick him up. And if not, we know exactly where we last saw him and we're just gonna get there and start looking. So, it looks good. He's He was in real bad shape, so I think we're gonna find him. We haven't seen anything. Hoping that's a good sign. <laughs> And then he's tucked up under under a bush over here. So we're gonna drop our heavy stuff off at camp and make our way over there and start searching. So my stomach is turning. <laughs> The feeling of relief finding this buck brought me to the ground. We try so hard in the off season practicing our shooting so things like this don't happen. Even so, there are some things we'll never be able to control. That's part of hunting. All we can do is go through the motions, and the rest is up to fate. And sometimes fate is not on your side. Luckily for me, this time it was, and this old coos buck would leave these hills with us. Grateful doesn't even come close. We head into Coos Camp with the hopes of bringing home a fraction of the country we love. Sometimes we're successful, and other times we're not. What is true, though, is that while we're striving to harness a piece of that Coos country for our own, we also lose a piece of ourselves. In the end, with unwavering adoration, we never truly leave those hills or that camp. They remain in our thoughts and continuously remind us of the month of January. Until next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Check out the next episode here. If you want to see a bonus episode featuring Outfitters for Hope and how to win this e-bike, check it out here. To get entered for all of our giveaways coming up, click the link here. All right, good luck this fall.